This is the Nikon FM3A SLR film camera. Looks nothing special, right? Looks like another SLR from the 1970s or 80s, except this model was launched by Nikon in 2001 and production ended in 2006. Nikon phased out the classic look of their mid-range cameras in the late 80s by discontinuing the much-loved Nikon FE2 and again in the early 90s by saying goodbye to the much-loved FM2. If you're unfamiliar with these two classics, the FE2 was an aperture priority camera introduced in 1983 with an electronic shutter and a mechanical backup of just 1 250th of a second. And the FM2 was a fully mechanical camera introduced in 1982 where the only use for the battery was the light meter. In the 90s, Nikon started to move over to more modern looking cameras, leaving that classic look in the past. But I guess the public was shouting out for an FM3 or an FE3. So a team of Nikon geeks got their heads together and they came out with this, the FM3A. And it blew the minds of photography enthusiasts with this near flawless camera. It had the great looks of that classic SLR, but this one was fully mechanical and electrical and needed no batteries to function from bulb mode to one second all the way to one four thousandth of a second with a film speed setting of 6000 ASA. What a beast, eh? And unlike previous aperture priority cameras, the FM3A continued to function across all speeds. And if the batteries ran dead, you could still carry on shooting across all the shutter speeds. But your light meter wouldn't work. So with all that said, in my hands is the Nikon FM3A and it's absolutely mint. Let's go and shoot the shit out of it. Oh, this is doing my Sweden. Every time I get dust off, it keeps coming back with more dust near than another. So I've already had a couple of uh, excursions out with this camera. Uh, went down a farm, took some photographs, again, of tractors. They came out all right. And uh, then I tried some night photography as well. Went down to, um, down to the beach at night, took a few photographs there on some long exposures, and they came out as nice as well. But we all know it's not about the camera most of the time. It's, it's the glass that's on top of the camera, you know, or on the camera. But sometimes cameras can fail if they're too old. I've got a few SLRs, light meters ain't that great. Um, and some older cameras, the shutter speeds ain't that great. So it's always a joy to be able to use a camera that's working throughout the light meter, throughout all the shutter speeds. So you know that, you know, when you're taking a picture, you're not going to really get overexposed or underexposed negs unless you do something wrong. Development or shooting. So this is the third shoot with this camera and I've come out to the woods. So I want to try and get some nice leafy kind of photographs that I could take in the dark room later on and make a print. I realise indoors I haven't really got enough of the outside coming in so it'd be quite nice uh, to get some shots. It's overcast day today so the, the sun is kind of in and out of the clouds which is nice so it gives me the opportunity to shoot um, with a little bit of overcast or if I want a little bit of mottled background or something like that. With this camera I've put on a 55mm micro nickel lens fantastic little sharp lens this is and I've also got with me a 28mm Nikon lens as well uh, this was kindly sent to me by Greg out in the USA so Greg if you're watching thanks a lot mate uh, talking of Greg in the last video I did some slow shutter speeds and I said to people if you've got any slow shutter speed uh, photography that you want to show on the channel just hashtag it um, and I'll show it on the channel if you remember the last video about the slow shutter speeds Greg does a lot of uh, car pans and his stuff's pretty cool check him out on Instagram I'll show you a couple of his shots and also some of the shots that people sent me uh, that they've done on on, uh, slow shutter speed it's quite interesting the last video I, I was talking about you know if you're if getting fed up with photography try something different go out and shoot some slow shutters and that's what I did but today I'm hoping to get some good stuff with the Nikon FM3A in the woods so I'm just going to interrupt the video for a moment to show you guys a little bit in my dark room what I'll be doing a little bit later on in the video if you want to skip this part there's the uh, timeline there for you to skip to but um, one of the photographs that I took I really liked and I'll show you that quickly now just found this nice uh, acorn, a little tiny acorn branch that's fallen off of a tree on the floor. Take a shot of it like this. That way I can mould the light coming from down there wherever I want it to be. And you'd never know that it wasn't on a tree. Turn it around. Done. And that's the print that I'm going to be working on. I think I like this one. I think I'm going to frame it and have it indoors. So uh, as I go through the video, I'll show you guys what I'm up to in the dark room at the moment, just making some test strips. So as well as all what I said at the start, this camera's also got the classic timer. It's got depth of field preview as well. No big deal. It's on all the other cameras. But it's also got, on the back here, 
an exposure lock button, which is really handy. I don't think there's any other SLRs of this kind of look that have got that. Um, and that's really handy because I use that quite a bit, especially when I'm shooting buildings and whatnot. And I've just stopped here because there's this little dead brown leaf sitting on these twigs. It's obviously fallen off the tree and just sat there. I'm going to be shooting f uh, 2.8, so I'm going to get a nice shallow depth of field. Hopefully this meter, well I know it will, work very well for me. I've got to keep remembering to pull that lever out so it turns all the electrics on. Oh yeah, I don't want to keep knocking that. 400 speed film, Kodak T-Max. And inside... It's got a needle, it hasn't got uh, electronic or, or any lights. It's got the old classic needle uh, for the exposure, which is telling me what shutter speed I'm gonna be shooting, which is around 2 50th of a second. And the metering is center, weighter, center weighted metering as well. Done. And it's really crisp as well with a mirror slap. It's really, really crisp when you fire it. If I go into manual mode, that's on uh, uh, aperture priority. If I now go into manual mode, I've got to press a little tiny button at the top, and now I can flick into manual mode. And even if the batteries are dead, I can still shoot all the shutter speeds, like I said earlier, um, in manual mode, which is really handy for someone like me that often forgets spare batteries. And when I go into uh, manual mode, the meter still works. There's a little tiny needle that tells me what the reading should be, the shutter speed should be. And there's another thicker uh, needle that tells me what I'm at. So at the moment I'm at 1,000th of a second and I can see that through the viewfinder. So I just need to bring that down if I want to shoot manual to about 125th, which is what the meter reading tells me. And I'll take a second shot. So the first shot was auto, this one's going to be manual. I think I was out of focus. <laughs> this is tricky. So I'm no expert when it comes to Nikon cameras. Most of the intro um, is stuff that I've read in the past. It's some of the stuff that I know, but some stuff I've had to swap up about the FM2 and the FE2. If you can add any value to that, stick it in the comments. I'd love to know, and I'm sure other people would as well. But um, I did say that this is a nearly flawless camera, and although it's absolutely fantastic, there's a couple of things that, that I wish maybe Nikon had thought of but maybe they couldn't apply to this camera. One of them is 100% viewfinder. It's not 100% in here, such as the Nikon F5 or the Nikon F6. Maybe because of the size, they couldn't fit it in. I don't know. Um, it would have been nice to see that, but hey-ho. And also the shutter speed, the most uh, slowish speed on this camera is one second, unlike the F FM2, I think it was, or the FE2. FE2 is eight seconds. It would have been nice to have seen eight second option eight second, four second, two second, one second, but this starts at one second, you know. Um, again, it's no big deal, but I don't know why they didn't put eight seconds on it. So this is the negative projected onto the easel, and I'll show you the size that I'm making. I'm using 16 by 12 paper, and that's a six, uh, uh, 15 by 11 border there, and I've got the um, full size negative inside that area so i'm just leaving a heavy border at the bottom and a little bit of around the edges uh, just to finish it off so that's the size print that i'm making i've had to do some test strips on this and this is the first test strip that i did i didn't do a test strip in increments i just went straight in at 10 seconds with a two and a half grade filter here which is uh, my rock to stand on this is what i always use when i start making prints from there i can choose other filters to attain the contrast so i did this for 10 seconds straight away i could see uh, this area here was getting quite dark and these highlights were just not being touched whatsoever. The highlights, when the sun hit that leaf, that was one I was holding. When the sun hit the leaf um, or the light hit the leaf, it was just, it was too blown out. So I need to control the contrast. And to do that, I went straight for a low contrast filter, which is a contrast zero filter. And what this is going to do, it's going to build the highlights and slowly build all the shadow areas and details as well. But it's about timing. How long do I need to uh, project the negative onto the paper on the enlarger um, to build it all up? And to do that, I had to go back to the increment way of doing things. I did these at 10 seconds a piece with a contrast zero filter. So this was 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30, 40, and 50. And I decided that 30 seconds quite looked, uh, looked quite nice. So I thought I'd then go off and do a little tiny print with 30 seconds on the highlight area and see how it looks. Once I get my hi highlight areas right, I can then work on the rest of the print. And that's a little tiny test there. You can see I've put it against the highlight areas here and this leaf here, 30 seconds, contrast zero, just let it run, developed, stopped and fixed, and then washed it, this piece of test paper, put it out, and I'm quite happy with that. So I thought, okay, how does it look against the rest of the print? So I used a 
much wider or longer piece of paper going across the whole lot and I'll pull the camera back and there it is there that's running across the leaves so with this one I can see all the shadow detail I can see the darkness I can see the blacks I can see the mids I can see the highlights and it all coming as long as my highlights aren't the same color as the or the inertia of the paper the whiteness of the paper I've got some detail going on so I was quite happy with this at 30 seconds with a contrast zero filter let's get back on the video and uh, I'll come back to this print in a little while and the only other gripe I've got with this camera, like when I had the uh, Nikon FE, the advance lever to take a shot has to be out slightly, like so. You put it there to lock into place and it shuts the battery off and you can't take a shot, it's like a fail safe. So to shoot the camera, you've got to have it out slightly, which is a bit of a pain if you want to shoot portrait, that's sticking in your head. You know, you can't quite get, get there, it keeps digging in your head like so. Or if you're a left eye shooter, like so, again, it's going to be digging in your head. That's the only gripe, really, that I've got. It's quite uncomfortable, but I suppose it's just a case of getting used to it. This camera's not autofocus, so any of your autofocus lenses won't work on this camera. And there's no indication inside if you're in focus or not, unlike the F6 or the F5. I think they've got a little tiny green dot that pops up when you get your focus, um, if you're shooting in manual, that is. And there's nothing like that, so all you've got in, a, in the, in the um, centre of the viewfinder is that centre prism there. That would pretty much show me if I'm in focus or not. And uh, sometimes when you're in the woods, you're often looking for stuff up there or your own level. It's always nice to look down and get some ground shots, whether you're lying down or whether you're pointing straight down. I'm just looking for any interesting leaves. There's a little tiny mushroom, ah. Huh? But I'm also looking for light as well. Let's get on me. Let's get on the deck. Little tiny mushroom here. I'll have to go to f5.6. It's too shallow to depth of field, I think. One thirtieth of a second. Wow. Hmm. I'll try it at 2.8 as well. It's a funky looking mushroom here, right in the middle of the frame. <laughs> it's got such a sweet sound to this camera. Every time you click it. Can I get a photograph of you? What for? Just for me. Okay, go on then. I'm trying out a new camera. Oh, are you? Just try and face you in the light a bit more. Oh, there it is. I can see you. Okay. I'm Tricky Dicky. Tricky Dicky. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Roger the Dodger. You're Roger the Dodger, are you? Hang on. I haven't had this long, so I'm just practicing with it. There you go. I've got it. What are you doing? Looking for wood. Looking for wood. What, firewood? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just said about these ferns dying. I'm looking at this one. You know what? This might make a nice photograph. I'm getting an angle on it. The sun's up there. Might just start lighting it a little bit. There we go. He was a nice chap, interesting bloke, moaning about the cost of energy, as we all are. He's collecting firewood. I keep forgetting to pull that out. <laughs> What's this going? 250th of a second, so I've got some aperture to play with, but I'm going to stay at 2.8. I like shallow depth of field sometimes. You can pinpoint what you want the viewer to see in your photograph or print or whatever. And the rest of it goes blurry. I'm not sure about my focusing. Oh, some more dead leaves over here, look. Quite attractive. It's all about trying to get a composition. I'm looking through um, and in my mind I'm visualising what a print, black and white print would look like. See, I'll go in portrait mode now and that thing's sticking in my head here. So I have to, it's a bit uncomfortable. I'm just trying to find some composition where it's not looking messy, where it looks a bit minimalistic. So the, I'm letting the rest of the print breathe, if that makes sense, rather than the whole thing being covered. So giving it some, ah, oh, okay. Pretty much like this. Ah, I've got it. Oh. So back onto making this print before I get on with showing you more of the photographs that I took. Um, I've already done the test strips. I'm happy at 30 seconds with a contrast zero filter. This is the paper that I'm using, Ilford's uh, multi-grade deluxe paper. This is 16 by 12 inches, and I've set all my easel out. I just need to make sure I've got my focusing right. Um, and then using my grain finder, and through there I'm looking at the grain on the negative and it's tack sharp on the grain 
for a T-Max film, uh, this 400 it ain't too bad in the pyro. It's pretty much fairly um, fine grain, but I'm enlarging it quite big as well. That little tiny 35mm neg is ending up this size, so you are going to see a little bit of grain. But I don't mind that. I like grain in my black and white photographs. And you might be thinking to yourself, for 30 seconds is quite long, but uh, I'm trying to uh, get those highlights right. And I've actually got f um, 5.6 on the lens, so it's not exactly um, a small aperture. My glasses on. Like I said, guys, if you're not interested in the darkroom side of things, I'll put the information uh, timeline on so you guys can skip that to the rest of the field work and the other photographs that I took. But for now, I'll just show you guys me making this print. Uh, 30 seconds straight off. I'm just going to quickly do that on the paper in case anything's fallen on top of it. Hopefully, I won't get any dust marks or anything like that um, on the negative. If I have, it depends how bad it is. If it really stands out, then I don't like that. And I might have to make another print and clean the negative, but um, the negative is clean. Hairs, don't really like hairs, but any anything that's not going to, you know, really, if you go up close to the print, fair enough. But don't forget, this is for my home, and uh, I've still got some standards, but it's not going to go into a gallery as such. Right. That's 30 seconds with a contrast zero filter. up. Let's put it in the developer and see how it comes out. Meanwhile, I'll show you guys more of the video. Strange, I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of wondering why Nikon did that, why they had that as a lock. Um, and you have to pull it out halfway to take your shot with it closing. I can't take a shot with it hanging out. That's when the electrics come on and I can take the shot. Honestly, it's beyond belief. I don't understand why they why they didn't think of that when they was designing it. It's going to dig in someone's head or be uncomfortable. I suppose, like I said, it's just getting used to. But if I was on the design team, I'd say, can't we put a button on there? So I'm just taking this shot over there. It's quite bright and down here is quite dark. I want this in detail. So if I look at the back, it's giving me around one... 25th of a second. If I look down here at the shadow area, it's giving me about 1 15th. So let's go 1 30th. I'm going to go into manual mode and shoot this at 1 30th. There you go. Or I could have shot Ow! I could have shot <laughs> in auto mode. Um, obviously, it's still going to shoot the shutter that it wants, but I've got that exposure lock at the back that I could have used while taking that shot if I was in uh, aperture priority mode. But I decided to go to manual mode. It's a great little tiny mushrooms fungus growing on this log here. Oh, if I can get to it. Ah. Oh, well. Get underneath. Oh, there we go. <coughs> I'll get a macro lens out and try that again. Try that again, 2.8. Get closer this time. Oh, the sun's just come out, lovely. Ah. That's pretty cool. So that's it, I've shot the entire roll of uh, Kodak T Max 400. I'm going to go back home, develop this in uh, 510 Pyro, and then get in the dark room and see what I can come up with. So I hope you guys are liking some of the photographs that I've taken so far. And it goes into the developer. This is Ilford's multi-grade developer. And I'm going to let this come through for about one and a half minutes. That should get all my details, all my tones, all my blacks, all my highlights rendered correctly on the paper. And then I can stop, fix and inspect the print after that. But so far, I'm really enjoying that camera, that shoot. This is only the third time that I've used it. Um, you know, and I've said before, I like all the cameras I shoot. I love all my cameras. I use them all. And, uh, you know, depending what I want to do on that day, I'll just take this camera or that camera and go and enjoy myself. And that's exactly what I'm doing with this uh, FM3A in this video. This is looking really nice, actually. And, um, yeah, what a joy, joy, joyous camera to use. And like I said, you know, <laughs> a camera's only as good as the lens in front of it or the person holding it. I've got other SLRs. The shutter speeds 
aren't as accurate, the light meters aren't as accurate, and it is nice for once to grab hold of a camera that's gonna um, shoot the right speeds, shoot the right metering for you, and get you good negatives. The rest is down to you in the development stage or your compositions at the time. But that um, Nikon FM3A with its metering system, I find it's absolutely flawless. It's bang on, it's so good. Okay, let's stop and fix it. So like I said, out of all the um, photographs that I took, this was the, um, the one that I held up the uh, acorn branch. This is the one I like the most, and I've made three prints here, well, I made four, this one's for me. These three guys are gonna go on my Etsy page. If you wanna support the channel and get one of these prints, I'm gonna put these on my Etsy page, look in the link in the description, and there'll be a link direct to it. Um, these will be signed as well, and sent off to you wherever you are in the world, space and time. So it's always nice to get a new bit of kit, no matter what profession or hobby you're involved in. And this time around, I managed to get a Nikon FM3A, which I'm really happy with. If you go online, there's some fantastic reviews about that camera. Some people are saying it's the best camera Nikon I've ever produced. Um, and like I said, I read up on the um, in the story, the history about it, and there was a lot of people saying at the time, well, the FE2, the F where's the FE3 and the FM3 gonna come out? But Nikon went, no, we, they got on with their jelly mold cameras instead. But after listening, maybe a few of their tech bods got together and went, you know what, let's give them one last send off on an old classic SLR, and they came out with the Nikon FM3A. And I think it's a fantastic bit of kit. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Keep shooting. I'll catch you next time.